Hey everyone, this is Andrew Tsai and welcome to my YouTube channel. So we finally have graphics acceleration in games on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac running Asahi Linux. So if you didn't already know, Asahi Linux is the project to get ARM64 Linux running on Apple Silicon hardware. And this is being done by a very small team, which has to reverse engineer all of the drivers, including keyboard, trackpad, display, and even graphics drivers too. And very recently, the team have gone through a very big breakthrough. Their latest release now features work in progress support for OpenGL. 2.1 and OpenGL ES 2.0. And this means that several games can now run on Asahi Linux with full graphical acceleration. And although this is still really early days, the work done on OpenGL could eventually result in the completion of a Vulkan driver, and this could hugely expand the amount of games that could run on Apple Silicon hardware. So today what we're gonna do is to do a full install tutorial for Asahi Linux from scratch, and then we're gonna show you how to install the graphics driver. We're gonna be testing GPU acceleration on several games, and also some emulation as well. So if you haven't subscribed already, then please consider subscribing and you'll be able to keep up to date with the latest Mac gaming tutorials. So what I'm gonna do is to leave a link in the description for the asahilinux.org website. And then what I'm gonna do is to scroll down here and then click check out the announcement. So this is the first Asahi Linux release page here. And what we're gonna do is to scroll down and then have a look at the system requirements. So this supports the base M1, M1 Pro, M1 Max, and also supports the M1 Ultra and M2 chips as well. You also need 53 gigabytes of free space in order to install this. And you need a working internet connection and you need to download about four gigabytes of data. Make sure to make a backup of your main macOS operating system as this potentially could get wiped as this is alpha release software. So next we're gonna scroll back up. I'm gonna find this script here. We're gonna select this text. I wanna control click, press copy, and now we can move on to the next step. So on the top right hand side of the screen, I'm gonna click on spotlight. I'm gonna type in the word terminal, and then we're gonna select the top line here. And now what we're gonna do is to control click on the blank space and press paste. And that's gonna paste in the terminal command we entered earlier. Here we're gonna press return, and now it started the installation process. So just let that run. Here's asking us for our administrator password, so just go ahead and type that in. If you don't see any text while you're typing in, don't worry, that's a security measure. As long as you've typed it in correctly and then press return, then your password will be accepted. Here it's saying, welcome to the Asahi Linux installer. This installer is in an alpha state. Make sure that you're familiar with the documentation. Press enter to continue. Here it's asking us if we want to enable expert mode. I'm not gonna enable this, I'm gonna press N and then press return. So here it's showing us the different partitions on our computer. We've got the main APFS Ventura partition, and then we've got our system recovery partition. So what we need to do is to resize the main partition to make space for Asahi Linux. So I'm going to press R here and press return. So it's saying here we're going to resize the main partition, which I've called Ventura. So here I've got a 512 gigabyte MacBook Air. And what I'm going to do is to type in 400 gigabytes because I want to give 100 or so gigabytes to the Asahi Linux partition. But you should just do what's right for you here. You can type in 30%, 50%, etc. Just follow the example on screen. Now I'm going to press return. Now it's saying here the system may freeze during the resize. I'm going to type in Y and then return. So now it's resizing partitions. Just wait for that to finish. So now that we have the free space allocation here of 94.38 gigabytes, we can go ahead and install the operating system into the free space. So I'm gonna press F and then return. And what I'm gonna do here is to install the Asahi Linux desktop, which has all of the graphical user interface that most people are gonna be familiar with. So I'm gonna press one and return. And it's asking us how much free space we wanna use out of the 94.38 gigabytes. I'm gonna type in max to use all the space available and then press return. Here's asking us for the name of our OS. I'm just gonna call it Asahi Linux press return. And that's going ahead and downloading Asahi Linux. So now here it's asking us for our admin password again. I'm going to type that in and then press return. And that's saying it's setting the new operating system as the default boot volume. So it's saying here that in order to boot into the new operating system, we need to complete one more step. We have to follow these instructions carefully. So what we're going to do is to make sure that we follow these steps. I'm going to press enter and shut down the system. So what we're going to do here is to make sure that the computer has been off for at least 15 seconds, and then we're going to start the recovery menu process. So we're going to hold down the power button on the top right hand side of the MacBook keyboard or if you have an iMac or a Mac mini then make sure to hold down the power button. On the screen it says continue holding for startup options and now when it says loading startup options you can let go of the power button. And then here we're just going to wait for the different boot options to come up and now we have the option here to load up Asahi Linux or macOS Ventura. So I'm going to use my keyboard or you can use the mouse to select Asahi Linux and then press the continue button. Now this is going to load up the Asahi Linux installer. So here Asahi Linux is saying that we're going to be prompted for login 
credentials two times. We're gonna type in our macOS credentials, press enter to continue. So now I'm gonna type in my administrator password, press return. Local policy update is in progress, please wait. So now it's saying that we're gonna be setting a custom boot object. You'll be putting your system into permissive security. Press Y and then press return. Now it's asking us for our macOS username. I'm gonna type in my one, which is admin, press return, and then my password as well. So it's saying here that the installation is complete, press enter to reboot. So now we rebooted Asahi Linux is gonna go through its setup process. So here we're gonna go ahead and press next. We're gonna enter our location. We'll use a default keyboard. Here we're gonna enter a username and password, press next. So all the details have now been set. I'm gonna press setup and it's going ahead and installing and setting up the Asahi Linux installation, press done. So now we have our user that we've created. We can go ahead and enter our password that we created. And now Asahi Linux has installed. So we can go ahead and set this up almost as if we're using a standard Linux computer. We can go ahead and connect to our Wi-Fi network. We can open the web browser. We can watch some quality YouTube videos. If I press play here, all the hardware decoding is working correctly. One thing to note is that the headphone jack does work, but the speakers are not enabled at the moment. This is something that's gonna be updated in the future. But basically everything else is ready to use as a standard Linux computer. So in order to test out the GPU drivers, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up the console here. So I'm gonna press the start button and then type in K-O-N-S-O-L-E and open up the terminal window. And here I'm gonna use this code to download Super Tux Kart, which is an open source kart racing game similar to Mario Kart, but open source and Linux based. And this is gonna download the Linux ARM64 version of the software. I'm going to control C, copy this first line here, and then press edit, paste into the console and press return. And this is downloading the ARM version of SuperTux Kart 1.4. So now this has finished downloading. Now we're using this command tar-xf and that's gonna extract this into a folder. Then what we're gonna do is to change directory into SuperTuxCart.0.4 Linux. Um, 64 to get into the right folder. Then we're gonna use the command dot forward slash run underscore game dot sh to run the game. So here we're gonna minimize. And now I wanna do is show you what the performance is like without the graphics driver. So I'm gonna press single player and then we're gonna load up my super tux cart. So as you can see, we're playing the game now and it's running really slowly. It's probably going about three to four FPS. And without the graphics acceleration, you're gonna have everything run through software and it's gonna be excruciatingly slow. So now what I'm gonna do is to close this and then we're gonna run the updates and get that graphics acceleration working. So here we're gonna go back to the Asahi Linux blog post and we're gonna look at the instructions on the Asahi Linux page with the Apple GPU drivers announcement. I'm gonna scroll down here and find the installation instructions. So next step is basically wanna type in this command sudo pacman-syu and this is gonna perform an update. So type in your administrator password, press return. And this is basically gonna update everything to the latest version, press Y and proceed with installation. So I might take a bit of time for that to finish, but once that's done, everything's gonna be updated. And I'm gonna move on and install the Mesa Asahi Edge package. So copy and paste this, sudo space pacman space dash capital S space Linux Asahi Edge space Mesa Asahi Edge, press return, password. Pacman will prompt you to replace Mesa with Mesa SI Edge, and this is normal. So here we're gonna press Y and return, Y and return again. And then we're gonna update grub. So sudo space update dash grub, press return. And then what we're gonna do is to run the Plasma Wayland session. Take this command sudo pacman s plasma wayland session press return press y and return now it's complete now i'll click the start menu and i'm going to press the restart button and restart this computer so here we're booting up into si linux booting into the first option here and now what we're going to do differently is we're going to select a different session so we're going to select wayland plasma type in your password so you might find the DPI a little bit wrong. What you can do is just go to system settings here. Then we're gonna scroll down on the sidebar, click display and monitor. I'm gonna turn this scaling down from 200% to 150. Here I'm gonna press apply and everything looks a bit more proportionate now. So now that the graphics drivers have updated, I'm gonna go back into my super tux cart and then run the game script press return. And now we're gonna run the single player game once again. So already I can see that this is actually running at pretty much full speed. I'm gonna start playing and this is pretty much a fully accelerated graphical game now. And it's really exciting to see that even though this is a pretty basic implementation of a free open source non-commercial game, this has so much potential for other types of games, for example, Linux ARM64 source ports, and also in the future, Vulkan games as well. So this has the potential to vastly expand the number of games that are playable on Apple Silicon hardware. So if you wanna find more games, you can use the command pacman ss space game, and that's gonna do a search for the package manager for other 
types of games that are available to download. So let's say I want to store this game, the Mario game with the portal gun mechanics, Mario Zero. What you can do is type in sudo pacman dash capital S and type in the package name, Mario with a zero, press return, press Y to continue. And now that's installed. If I just type in the command Mario with a zero, press return. So if I just minimize this, I can go ahead and play this game and basically do stuff like add some Mario portals here. And this is all working at pretty high frame rate. Let's say we want to get an emulator running. We're going to download MGBA dash QT. So just type in sudo pacman dash capital S GBA dash QT, press return, press Y and return. And once that's built, we're going to find it in the start menu. If you type in MGBA, we're going to find the Game Boy Advance emulator here. So let's open this and then we can go ahead and open up any kind of ROM in archive. For example, here we're going to load up Pokemon and we can run this pretty much in full screen. But this Game Boy Advance game can be emulated at 60 frames per second. It's running fantastically on Asahi Linux on the M1 Mac. So here we're going to download and install the Minecraft clone called Mine Test. So just use the command sudo pacman dash capital S Mine Test. And once that's installed, we can go ahead and launch it using the command Mine Test. Here we can create a world. If you see here, we're getting a frame rate of 60 FPS and it's a very smooth and playable game, which is very similar to Minecraft. If you wanted to as well, you can also join games as well so you can play online multiplayer. You can see here we've created an avatar with a character and you can actually play this completely online as well. So this is a pretty huge multiplayer map. We are running on OpenGL 2.1 and it's all being hardware accelerated and it's working really nicely even on multiplayer. So this is a fantastic achievement. We're able to run this Elm 64 software, native bare metal, and we're able to play this multiplayer game. So anyway, the implications of full graphical acceleration is really exciting. Eventually the work on OpenGL is going to be integrated into a Vulkan driver and this combined with a competent x86 64-bit translation layer could eventually result in a Proton-like layer which would hugely expand the number of games that would be compatible on Apple Silicon hardware. Please let me know in the comments what you think about this new graphical acceleration or what it means for the future of Apple Silicon gaming. Anyway I hope you found this video useful. If you did please like, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next next video.